talking about, um, first of all, our TIBCO uh, community site, the exchange. This is a place where you can download um, components um, and try them out. We've published a bunch of analytic um, data function examples and others, you know, kind of visualization and so forth. And in each of these um, components, you can download a zip file. You get a um, example DXP file that, just, that shows you how to use the um, actual component. So I'll be talking today about this points in polygons uh, data function for Tipco Spotfire. Um, this is basically a, um, a data function in the, uh, the with the tear engine. And what this is used for is if you have uh, geospatial data in two forms, you might have geospatial data in shape files, which contains some valuable um, information at that level. And you might also have some uh, spatial data at locations. And this is just a way of combining those two together because you might want to, you know, borrow data from one type and the other type and just merge those two together. So the way you uh, basically use this is you um, go to the releases uh, uh, link right there and you basically just download this zip file. And when you unzip this, you get both the, um, the data function definition file, which you can use. I'll be, just, I'll be showing you how to do that. And you also get a um, sample DXP file. So let's just go to the um, sample DXP file, which comes with this, with this download. <clears throat> so what we have here is, again, um, you know, we have some shapes. In this case, the shapes of the U.S. state um, boundaries, which is from the, uh, the U.S. Census uh, website. And I've also just grabbed some um, location data. In this case, these are locations of some airports around the U.S. So, um, you know, you've got airport data and you've got some state uh, state uh, shape files and you want to um, merge these two. You know, there might be some reason for doing this. You know, for example, the state, different states might have different regulations about airports, you know, maybe the operating hours, for, for example. Um, you might want to identify which, which um, airports are located in states that have certain, you know, characteristics. And this is the result of the um, of the analysis after the data function is has been applied. So you, beforehand, you don't have these colors here. Afterwards, uh, because they're colored, I can basically click on these individual states and say, okay, I can now very easily identify um, which of the airports within each of those states I select. So it's very easy to do that. <clears throat> so that's the that's the result. Now to dive into a little bit more detail. Um, this DXP file has a has the information tab I'm going to jump to here, which gets into some of the nitty gritty of how you actually wire this up. So at the top, I've got um, some information just describing what this does, <clears throat> some background. The part right here really talks about the inputs and the outputs. Um, so essentially, there's four inputs. Um, this data function requires two inputs from the shape file and two inputs from the point table and it'll produce one output, um, just ID, it's a column, so it pans to the point table. Just so to, to make things a bit clear, here's a little screenshot of the, um, the shapefile data. The USA states from the census, I've got a, um, this geometry column here, which has a little shape of the states, um, and that is gonna be used in the geometry um, column required as, as the input. And the other one is the identifier. So you need some kind of unique identifier <clears throat> for this data set. Typically, the geo ID would be used. I'm just going to use the state name because it's pretty familiar and so forth. The airport locations, you know, obviously the original data has the, has the states in them, but let's say you didn't know the states, right? So you just know the um, the state um, abbreviation and just the latitude, longitude. So those two are used as the input to columns here. Now. When I'm done, <clears throat> I'll basically have the um, the, the state, uh, the airport locations with a new column here, the uh, the ID column, which is coming as the output. So the data function basically appends this column as a new column into my into my file, um, and that's basically how it works. And what I'll do now is I'll show you an example of actually using this um, in the wild, and so forth. So if I um, so for my starting points, <clears throat> so what I have here is a, obviously a completely different data set. Um, this is um, this has a couple of different data sets. One is um, some crime data from New York City, um, their open data portal, 
it's actually over a million records of um, crime data over about 10 years. And there's also a census tract uh, shape file, again, from the U.S. Census Bureau. So if I look at my layers here, the, um, the blue dots are the, the, the felony um, point locations, and these um, shapes here are from the Census Bureau. So this is just a, a shape file of this U.S. Census tracts. Um, and here's the here's the um, here's the point locations. And the reason you might want to combine this, I mean, this is obviously um, an example with this data set. These point locations might be stores or other business locations, and you might want to um, use some data from the the shape file. Like for example, the U.S. Census here has lots of like demographics, the age of the um, structure, housing structures, the number of people, so forth. Um, all kinds of demographic information that might be useful to append to the um, individual points. Um, as far as the um, the tables goes, let's take a look at the tables here. So the table, <clears throat> they've got one shape file or one point location. The shape file has the the shapes of these, of these individual you know census tracts, um, and the the felony incidents um, has. Again, the required latitude, longitude, and I want to basically um, append the column here of the some some kind of identifier from the, uh, the the census precincts here. So to use this, I'm going to basically go to the Insert tab of Spotfire. I'm going to insert a data function. Um, this Spotfire isn't logged in, so I just have one option here, which is from File. So the file is the file you get from the download from the um, community site. So after you unzip the um, the zip file, you'll get this .sfd, which has our, our definition for the the, um, the the data function. So I'm going to open this up, <clears throat> and here's where the um, they'll ask you for the inputs and outputs. Um, and again, you need the geometry and ID from the shape file, and you'll need the latitude longitude from the point location. So the geometry is easy, easy enough. I'm going to grab a column here, um, go to the precincts, and use the Geometry tab, it just kind of knows to look for this uh, binary uh, geometry. So the identifier, um, um, I'm going to go to the uh, again the, the precincts. I'm going to use this actually this, this geo ID uh, column okay, here. So this is the, the okay. I think people should go on mute if they're not. Um, so I can hear. So I can hear some background noise here. So here's my identifier. I'm going to use the geo ID. This is actually what's linked to other data tables from the, from the census. So census has a ton of data basically linked by the GOID. Latitude and longitude are going to come from my um, point location. Um, make sure I get the correct lines there. And latitude comes from the latitude as well. So I can kind of make sure I check my check all the inputs and so forth. So the output <clears throat> is going to be a new column that's going to be attached to the um, into this table down below, right? So I'm going to go to outputs. It's going to be called ID. I'm going to um, select a column. It's going to go into this filling. It's going to have the right number of rows here. So it's got a million, you know, it's got over a million rows to go to do this. When I press OK, it's going to take a little while. So um, what I'm going to do is jump over to the discussion page. I've got the, um, a copy of this um, table up here, so I'll just keep an eye on see when this column appears up there. But to discuss this, <clears throat> a little bit. Once you get that identifier, um, I kind of see three ways of using this. One is you can just use this as is. You can go back to the map and use to color code the map just for interest, um, you know, to, to see how that works. You'll see that's finished now. Um, you can also, as I did in the airport data, use it to select certain points by filtering or marking to select certain points based on attributes. <clears throat> now, the other two really, um, Involve ways of combining the data, so you might want to take uh, information out of the shape file and use that to enhance your point data. I mean, the shape file might you might actually not care about the shapes themselves. You just might want to, um, you know, grab the data from the shape file. The data might exist only in the shape file. You want to basically figure out how to extract that information and, and you know decorate your your point data with that information that you can use it for further um, modeling and so forth. Or you might want to aggregate the point level data up to the polygon level. I'll be showing you um, this one later on, but first I'm going to jump back to the identifiers as is. If I go back to my um, incident map, <clears throat> um, actually, the, so the color by um, 
I've got the this new identifier is actually um, now present. Actually, it wasn't present before. I was going to show you before, before but the identifier now um, basically gives you a color coding by all the different um, census tracts there. And you know, this might be a way, for example, of validating the data. So if the data comes with um, some kind of geographical tag, you can actually, you know, see which ones actually do lie within the enclosed values and see if they're actually um, correctly mapped. But, you know, this is a nice way of visually looking at, at the map. By the way, the um, <clears throat> I should point out that these locations have been mapped um, by the New York City so that they're located at the center of the blocks um, just to protect privacy and so forth. So. It looks very regular and so forth, but each what looks like each individual dot here might actually represent you know tons and tons of different points. So the the next step is just to basically bring that information up to the census block level as a way of aggregating those data, so you can actually make some sense of the um, of that information. <clears throat> so here's my the tab on the same DXP file of the census tracts, so and I'm going to now color code this by some attributes from the um, the point data, and to to do that, I need to actually formally link those two data tables within Spotfire. So to do that, so I'm going to go to the Edit Data Table um, uh, Properties thing, and actually go into some go to this Column Matches. Here are my two different data tables. Go to the Column Matches uh, tab. And if once I set up this set up this column match, I'll be able to then color code you know bar information from one table to the other one. So my precincts. Um, here's my geo ID that I used before, and that gets mapped to the ID column in the other one. And it looks like it's going to match okay, so that's going to be good. So once they do that, then essentially that makes available, if I went to color by, that does is um, it makes available both tables now are available as, as drop downs. Both, you know, if I had data in the precincts, I could color by. But now if I, um, you know, all the information from the, the felony instance is available to color by here, so I'll just do that. And then um, let's say I just choose, I'm just going to count, um, just choose one of these columns, just, just count by that. So, so that's my um, my count <clears throat> of the incidents per per uh, census tract. I've got this um, nice kind of pastel uh, color scheme already preloaded here. So this shows you. Um, you know, the, the geographic distribution of these incidents, obviously the population density um, factors in as well, but you can get an overall sense of what's going on there. Now, another reason to do this, of course, is because of Spotfire's native tools for um, for manipulating the data. Um, I can go back to my data panel here, and let's say I go to the, um, uh, choose the actual incidents there, and look at the offense, which is the name of the, the felony, Category it is so. I, so this map right now shows all basically all of the all of the different categories. So I went to focus on you know burglary. Um, it basically just shows me just those points for burglary. Um, there's a couple hot spots here and there. Um, and you know by the way these the census tracts go across you know bodies of water. So that's why it looks a little bit funny because they're um, you know it basically joins Manhattan and um, Ranks and so forth. So, um, so here's burglary, uh, felony assault. Um, there's some hot spots. There's a um, correctional facility up there, I think. Uh, grand larceny um, is in Midtown Manhattan. Grand larceny of motor vehicles is in different areas. So basically, you get a sense of these different shapes of where, where things are. Um, you know, murders. A couple of there's fewer of those. There's a couple hot spots there, and robbery. So. Um, Really, the um, filtering and marking capabilities of Spotify really come into play here. So, if I want to, you know, choose one of these categories, I can, you know, further look at some of the um, other patterns of, of of this. So, I could, you know, robbery, for example. You might want to look at the, um, you know, the the day of the week or the the hour of the day. You know, maybe some robbery um, might occur. You might want to compare the um, the spatial pattern of robbery, the early hours of the day versus um, versus later on, you know, just see if there's any kind of funny patterns there. So um, there's a little bit of, you know, variation there. Or you might want to look at the, um, you know, perhaps the date, the um, these various categories might, the spatial pattern might change from, 
early in the time series to later in the time series. By the way, the, the, the spatial pattern is a percentage. So the, uh, the the numbers here, the actual numbers might change, but the, we're looking at the spatial patterns there. So anyway, you know, once you have the data in Spotify or links like this, you can do all kinds of really interesting stuff and then obviously use this for some predictive models <clears throat> down the road. So um, that's basically how this works. I would encourage you to go back to the um, exchange and try, um, we have a lot, of, a lot of these components, we're putting more and more up there. Um, you know, user contributed as well. So each each of these, you get a um, a, um, a DXP file. You get um, the underlying um, you know data function definition and some instructions and so forth. A lot of them have videos and have used them. So I would encourage you to go back here and uh, give this a whirl. So 